Hi, I'm Jeremy. And I'm Dan. And this is episode 13 of the 1A Auto Talking Tune Show. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about hybrid and electric cars. Surprisingly, they're a lot older than you think. So the first electric cars debuted in the 1800s. And by the 1900s, the early, early 1900s, they were actually outpacing the gas and the steam cars um, because they were quieter, they were cleaner, uh, they had a quicker start time than like a steam engine would. Yeah, steam engines took up to 45 minutes to just warm up. Right, at the time. Right. And not that they make steam engines now, no. but <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was, that was far too long to wait for some people. Um, not to mention also, um, back then the early starters on these were like hand crank starts exactly you could easily break, break an your arm thumb, break your arm <laughs> yeah you don't want to be uh, caught with a kickback from a, a hand driven starter right that's that's not something i would want to do so yeah the electric cars at the time they were they were actually forging ahead of the other ones um it didn't stay that way for long right um yeah. right about the 1920s uh we started paving roads so yep. there was there were greater distances we could go the problem with batteries back then were they just weren't keeping up um, yeah. charge-wise. Uh, gas engines were becoming cleaner. They were putting exhaust on, uh, mufflers on them, so they weren't quite as loud, quite as messy, quite as dirty. Yep. And thanks electric, to hand electric starters came out. Yep. So you weren't you didn't have to worry about the hand crank anymore. So they were safer to use. Yes. And also thanks to Henry Ford, he had uh, kind of revolutionized the. The, uh, the assembly line. Yes. So it brought down the cost of, of gas vehicles much much quicker, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, uh, electric vehicles were go still going up in in cost. Yep. Um, so they kind of died out after that, and and gas took over to to what we we've, we've been used to. Right. So then, for the next like eighty years, electric cars essentially vanished off the map. Right. You occasionally had some some prototype and concepts. Uh, Chevy had done. Uh, the electro, electric uh, Chevette and also had done uh, yep. the electric uh, uh, Corvair, Corvair. Yep. Yep. Um, in the 60s and 70s. But again, they were, you know, batteries were expensive. The whole uh, car was super expensive, right. unattainable by the average person. Right. It was just meant to be something to show off at, at, mm -hmm. a, at a, a car show, and that yeah. was about it. They, they didn't ever made it into production. Right. So then the 1990s come around, and California, the California Air Research Board, um, they came out with some new rules for selling vehicles in their state. Right, and and automotive manufacturers knew California was one of the biggest markets for for selling cars in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to sell cars, you really wanted to kind of suck up and yeah, and, and cater to the California market. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, so what what the cardboard uh, came up with was a requirement that by 1998. Uh, 2% of all vehicles sold in California would be zero emission vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, by 19, uh, by 2001, they were gonna have 5%, and by tw 2003, they were gonna have up to 10%. Right, which, yeah, those numbers sound pretty small, but when you think about how many cars that really is, it's like, it's probably hundreds of thousands when, when it all is said and done. Right. Unfortunately, that didn't work out so well. Right. Um, I mean, in the 1990s, there were some like S10 pickups, uh, there was the the famous Saturn EV1, yep. which there's a great movie about, uh, Who Killed the Electric Car. Right. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Great movie. Yep. Uh, Toyota had the RAV4 EV. Yep. Uh, Nissan had the Ultra. Um, Ford Ranger EV. Yep. Yeah. The, these cars all existed in the 1990s, and I remember seeing the um, the S10s around the Air Force Base that I worked on for or worked at for a short time. Yep. And it was it was crazy to see them because you didn't hear them coming or going. Right. You just saw them plugged in in the parking lot and then you'd like see one scoot by silently. You'd hear nothing but tires moving. Right. It was yeah. bizarre. And in a lot of the bigger cities too, you had they set up the infrastructure for all these charging systems. They mm -hmm. they all agreed to a, a single charging standard, mm -hmm. uh, which is this big uh, paddle they'd kind of depending on the vehicle like put right. in the nose or put in the side of the vehicle yes um and so they, they were anywhere you'd, you'd go to park your your, your vehicle at yeah it, it was the next big thing right and then it wasn't right, <laughs> right. so yeah. these, these vehicles a lot of these were very very expensive to make yes um and in many cases were leased 
um, and strictly just sold in California so that the manufacturers would comply to the rules. Yep, California's um, happy. Right. The manufacturers got away with making a minimal amount of cars yep. that were really expensive. Some of them were more expensive than they actually leased them out for. Right. Um, so it didn't financially make sense for, for some of these car manufacturers. Exactly. But it got their other cars into the state. Which right, which is, is what, what they, they were yeah. after. Yep. And along with that, there's, uh, there was rules at the time, and there still is, about the manufacturers having to have enough uh, replacement parts for all of these cars for a certain amount of years after they manufacture the car. And if they lease the vehicles uh, to the public, these, um, these, these time frames are much shorter. Right. If you only allow the car out in public for two years, you really yeah. don't have to support the car for two years, as exactly. opposed to the, the rules for, I think, in some cases, up to 10 years. Right. Um, and, so. as, and as soon as the lease was done, in many of these cases, the manufacturers bought back the electric cars. Well, didn't really buy them back, but took them back. Right. And just crushed them all. Right. So Some did make them out. There's mm -hmm. a couple of EVs that are in um, in museums now. Mm -hmm. uh, they're so non-functioning. So yep. yep. You, you can't actually go drive it. Yeah. Um, and I believe uh, the the RAV4s are still available in some places. Mm -hmm. um, they, they didn't take them all back and, and at the uh, request of of their uh, their buyers, they, they allowed them to be sold as opposed to just leased. Yeah. Yeah, if you hop on the internet, you can see um, and you search for like piles of EV1s, you can see like these crushed piles of EV1s that yeah. are just like in a junkyard. It's just like heartbreaking to see because at the time they came out and they were getting like 60 miles per gallon and then they came out with battery upgrades to get them to 100 miles yeah. or not really miles per gallon but uh, yeah. on a charge yeah. and up to 160 I think on their yeah. the final iteration right. with the upgraded battery which is a really good I know. distance even, even for today I mean that was 1996 or something like that yeah. and even for today that's that's better than many of the cars the electric cars we have now right yeah and when the average person only drives maybe 40 miles round trip mm -hmm. um, that's that's a couple days worth of, of driving without really ever is. having to charge up and never hitting a gas station ever. Right. Now, at the same time though, the safety standards were not quite as strict as they are now, so all the yeah. new cars have like 100 more airbags than they do right. in the 1990s. Yep. There's way more safety equipment, way heavier car now than there was in the 1990s. Exactly. Plus the EV1 was a two-seater where, you know, most of the new electric cars out there now are four-seaters Four or, or five-seaters, um, some even more than that. So. So yeah, that's that was the 1990s. Yeah. So we also 1990s. had that, I was gonna say also at that time too. We also had the price of gas drop a lot. Yes, exactly. Um, so now yeah, now you have to question: Do I want to pay for electricity to charge up my car or get really cheap gas? Right. And, and most Americans went. I want. I like the cheap gas. And yeah, we had the huge SUV boom. Yes. So we just had all these gigantic land yeah. yachts again on the road. Right. Everybody needed a Yukon and a Suburban and an Escalade. So. You know, th that's what happened in the 1990s. Right. So cars, again, electric cars, again, died off in the in the 90s, and then they came around again. Right. Full circle. Right. Gas got a little more expensive. Yep. Um, and Honda blessed us with our very first hybrid vehicle here in the States, which was the Honda right. Insight. Mm -hmm. um, again, this was a two-door, so it wasn't exactly the, the perfect car for everybody. It wasn't quite a family car, mm -hmm. um, but it got the ball rolling. Um, so much so that in 2001, the one that we all know about now, uh, the Toyota Prius right. debuted in the States. Yeah, and that one was the real game changer, which kind of put the hybrids on the map. Right. They got amazing miles per gallon, or mile, I keep saying miles per gallon, but it's really <laughs> miles on a charge and, yeah. and whatnot. Um, and, you know, they could go like a huge amount of distance with the combination of their gas motor and electric motor. Yep. Plus it was comfortable. You could seat a, a normal family inside. Right. Um, and, and by being a hybrid, um, you got kind of the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. um, you Being electric only, that's a big battery to, to house in there so they could go with a smaller battery. Yeah, and then a um, small engine to back it up. Exactly. And you weren't stranded when the battery ran out. Yes. It, you, you could keep going, you could keep driving. It yeah. was, you really weren't interrupted like you would be with an electric vehicle early on. Yeah, the biggest fear with a, f a fully electric car is on the highway in the middle of nowhere right. and suddenly you need to charge up your car. Yeah, which is termed these days range anxiety. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's a real thing. So, yeah, having this hybrid option, you know, throwing some gas in there that you may never need, that that kind of relieves yourself from that range anxiety, which right. is really nice. Right, and we actually have a few different ki kinds of hybrids these days. Um, a mild hybrid is, it's a gas and electric setup. Uh, the most common vehicles that had these were, were your big SUVs and your trucks. 
um, where the battery, the battery electric setup would kind of assist the gas setup. It couldn't power the vehicle on its own, be more for uh, cruising along, keeping the, the vehicle maintained. Mm -hmm. um, you had your full hybrids, which would be like your Prius, um, like your C-Max, which are mm -hmm. you know, either the battery, uh, the electric setup can run the wheels all by itself, mm -hmm. which sounds kind of creepy when you, you, you see one roll by, because again, <laughs> you hear nothing other than a little tiny whir. Yeah. Or when you really need the power or get up and go, mm -hmm. uh, the gas kicks in. Right. Um, and then uh, furthermore, you also have now your plug-in hybrids, where your standard hybrids recharge the battery via braking, mm -hmm. um, and a plug-in is exactly what it sounds like. You plug it into the wall and it, it charges up the battery. They tend to have a bigger battery than a full hybrid. Mm -hmm. They tend to have a little better uh, mileage distance uh, than, than your normal hybrids would. Right. Yes, yeah, so then 2008 comes along, and the big thing on the, on the map is Teslas. Yes. It's, it's the latest and greatest technology, and right. everybody wants one. Right. Before this, hybrids and electric cars weren't really looked at as something for the muscle car guys. It wasn't right. looked at as a powerful thing. It was more of your, you bought one to, to kind of be flashy, kind of be yeah. green. Yes. And then Tesla came out and changed that, that game and that, that thought completely. Yeah, they came up with their sports car, the Roadster. Uh, it was expensive, 109000 so... Yeah, it wasn't for the average person. Yeah, but it was fast. Yes. And it also went 120 miles per gallon. Right. Um, which was which was better than any electric car in that in that generation. Yep, and it was the first so. all electric car to be able to be allowed on highways too. Yes. Uh, earlier iterations that we've had along the way has kind of been just glorified go-karts. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty much limited to 35 mile an hour zones or less. Yes. So going around town, this is this was a vehicle you get on the highway, you get on the pedal, and um, if you're good to it, it would go 200 miles mm -hmm. per charge. Right, and so, it had 250 horsepower yeah. and like 200, 290 foot pounds of torque. Yep. So it really was a fast, fast car. Plus, exactly. it's it's tiny as it is. Yep. Um, yeah. So it, it looked like it's it's a sports car. It, it, yeah. was a, it was a modified Lotus, so it looked nice. It went really quickly. Yeah. Um, you got a good good distance out of it. Right. And it's something that nobody else has. Your neighbor right. doesn't have one in the garage. Exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, it, it's something that a lot of people wanted and it got Tesla the funding to then turn it into a sedan. Right. So, um, so shortly after, Tesla starts making the Model S, is yep. that what it's called? Yeah, Model S sedan, which is obviously beautiful. I would yep. love to have one. Yep. These are these are much more common these days. Mm -hmm. um, they're popping up more and more. Yes. They're they're nowhere near as expensive. Mm -hmm. But you can again, it's a it's a four door. It's a beautiful looking car. Mm -hmm. um, great range on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you if you watched our last video or two videos ago about wagons, you know that you can actually get the wagon version with the seats way in the back of the Tesla. Yes. Which. Yep. As the, wagon the jump folks, seats. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna want that wagon. Yep. And, and also, one of the, the the greatest things is they recently released a all-wheel drive version, mm -hmm. uh, the Model S P85D. Yes. Um, which in insane mode puts out between all the motor setups and and everything, pretty close to 700 horsepower, uh -huh. um, which is bonkers yeah and there's some there's some great videos on the internet of, of them doing insane burnouts and donuts yep. and fun things like that yeah I think and they I think I saw a quarter mile time of like high 11s on one yeah. of these things yeah which is just incredible for a car that you can just go buy right and the only it's, thing you hear again is is the tire yeah. spinning and the smoking and everything right yeah, yeah it's a beautiful thing um, so 2010 comes around Chevy Volt comes out comes yeah out. something more for the common person yes again it's it's still uh, a little bit on the pricier side of sedans yep um, but it's it's still attainable um, right. it's not quite the hundred thousand dollar car that you know a Tesla is right um, the, the Volt was was kind of the this this came in at right around forty thousand dollars which was mm -hmm. h higher end for yep. the average person um, but thanks to different uh, government credits and federal mm -hmm. credits, you could bring that down into the 30s. Right. Uh, but what made these great was it was a full electric car, but it also had a backup electric en uh, gas engine. Mm -hmm. um, so you had, uh, it got 40 miles per charge, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when the average person only really does that in a day, yep. it's it's more than enough to do your, your daily driving. But mm -hmm. on top of that, because it had the the gas engine, you could extend that, um, the gas engine would 
actually just charge the batteries. It wouldn't. It wasn't yeah, it wouldn't direct. actually power the vehicle. Right. Um, and you get another 300 miles out of it. Mm -hmm. So you got rid of that fear of being stuck somewhere, but you also got the the beauty of possibly never having to, to put gas in. Yeah, I know. I've read people. I've read uh, articles about it online where people say I haven't put gas in it in like a month and a half or something like right. that because they just they drive it. They use the tiniest little bit of gas to charge up the batteries. Otherwise, it's plugged into a wall, yep. and and you know the gas never gets used. Right. But on the other hand, I'm pretty sure that they have a system where it does use the gas so that your gas never goes stale. Right. <laughs> so there actually is a system in there to prevent you from having you know this molasses in your gas tank exactly. at the same time. So yep. so it's really a, a really innovative setup, mm -hmm. and of course we get the Cadillac ELR out of that as well. Yep. Which is a beautiful, beautiful car. Right. Yeah. You know, built um, on the same platform, but yep. this one was meant to be more of the luxurious look. It's yes. instead of being the four door, it's a two door. Um, yeah. Styled much like the the uh, ATS and the CTS of the time. Mm -hmm. um, again, really slick looking car, but Definitely. it was a little bit higher up in the price range. Uh, I think that one's starting high sixties, low seventies. So. Right. Yeah. So if you got the money, yeah, right. why not? <laughs> Um, so then there's also the Nissan Leaf, which is fully electric, right? The 73 mile range, yep. which, again, not bad. It's more than most people go in a day. Um, right. This this was kind of Nissan's um, shot at, at at the Volt. Yeah. Um, being a, a reasonably priced car, this was closer to uh, thirty four thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars retail value. Yep. Um, again, 73 three miles to it. Smaller mm -hmm. car. Uh, yeah. But this one did not have the the gas engine that the Volt did. Uh, right. Yeah, it brought down the price, but it also kind of did limit you just to electric. Right. So yeah, if you if you work nearby, it's probably a great car for you though. Yep. Plus, not buying gas sounds really nice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so so where are we now? Right. I mean that's that's the big question. So right now, you have a lot of big performance cars going hybrid. Right. And. In the last, um, in the, since 2012, here's a fun fact for you. Since 2012, all of the uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans races have been won by a hybrid vehicle. Right, which says a lot about that. These are right. these are it's a one of the hardest endurance races that the, that there is today. Yep. And every manufacturer that's won has right. gone in hybrid. Yeah. And so they're they're putting technology into this right. and learning a lot from these races because if they can abuse on a on an electric car at full throttle, yep. 24 hours, they're learning a lot from this. Right. And on top of that, when they do that, it trickles down into the the yes. lower stuff. Um, yes, most you, definitely. You might not have a, a a full hybrid or mild hybrid, but some of this technology like start and stop mm -hmm. started in in your hybrids. Um, so that saves you, you gas, and that's mm -hmm. that's trickling into some of your more basic uh, gas engine vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, extending the, the the mileage for you. Right. Um, almost every manufacturer these days has an EV or a hybrid of some sort. Every right. all three uh, American brands do. You kind of have to for Chrysler. They kind of cheated because Fiat's the really the only one that has right. the the 500 mm -hmm. uh, has got an electric version. Right. Uh, but. You can find them in Chevys, you can find them in Buicks, you can find them in Fords. Fords. Yep. Um, yeah. Ha the Japanese brands do too. Honda's got them, Nissan's got them. Mm -hmm. Toyota yep. has had them for many, exactly. many years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of brands out there that, that have them, and, I'll, and I've driven a couple, and they're surprisingly quick. You yeah. can definitely burn the tires off the front of them if you choose to. Right. One of the things that, that um, is forgotten a lot with electric vehicles is that the torque curve there's no curve, it's a straight line. Yeah, it's instant. You have right. full power right, right from as, the get-go. Right as, soon as, yeah. as soon as you push the pedal. Exactly. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And and like, the fastest sedan right now is the Tesla. Right. It has it, 691 horsepower. Right, it's really only instant. challenged right now for, for a four-door sedan. It's yeah. really only competitor is the 707 horsepower. Uh, Hellcat. Right. Yes. Yes, the Charger, no, Challenger Hellcat. Yep. Um, yeah. And that that is a beast in itself. But again, it's it's gas. It's not it's not electric like the Tesla. Right. It's not an all-wheel drive either. Right. And it's not a four-door. So it's not really the family. Yeah. Family mobile. Exactly. Oh. But there's also there's also the really uh, really high-end exotics like the McLaren P1. Yep. The Ferrari La Ferrari. The Porsche 918. Yep. And, um, and Koenigsegg's new uh, Regera yes. is, is also a hybrid. So. 
So the top end cars are even seeing that this is one of the best ways to get the power to the ground and get the most right. power as well. Yeah. So for you, if you're driving a hybrid, why did you choose a hybrid? Or if you're not, what's holding you up? Yeah, we want to know. So leave us some comments and uh, be sure to share the video on Facebook, like us and tweet us and email us, leave us a comment and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Need yeah, actually I can. Hair. It's very easy to do. I know. Because the problem is, when my hair grows out, I have the hair on the sides and it makes the top look bald. Yeah, see, I get a little like, yeah, it's a little bushy yeah. on side. It's very thin on top. Yeah, that's why I don't have hair at all. It's I know. incredibly, see, it's nice and soft. Right. Like, like this, but it looks really bad. So is this but, just like, like you get the buzzer thing and do like number one or something? Yep. Actually, yeah. I use the, the zero just like the bare blade wow yeah that's what i need to do i think i've had the same one for like 15 years it cost me like 30 bucks for an lk one yeah you have saved a lot of money in haircuts yes